All right, guys. Um, just do a quick video. Maybe I'll do a detailed tutorial later, but uh, I just want to get this out there as a, a basic understanding slash a semi-advanced tutorial for getting basic VR resolution set up and your field of view set up in Star Citizen uh, using Vorpex based on this calculator that I've been working on. Um, so you've already finished your, your host file edit. You've done your settings, and now we're in your attributes. Um, there's several settings, the field of view, your, um, your width attribute, as well as your height attribute. And this will be the display setting, um, resolution settings for your game. Um, so real quick, I just want to try to explain this calculator. What we've done is we've taken a look at each of the information that the public information of the open um, open VR settings for all of the VR headsets uh, at least all the ones in this list and we've calculated backwards the the field of view values on average for the lens to the to the screen or the projection of the VR headset um, and then we've added a calculation that will take your aspect ratio and convert it to the way Star Citizen calculates the field of view diagonally in game. Um, so I'm going to be testing on the Valve Index. Uh, maybe I can bring the Pimax Crystal soon. But for the index, we go with a recommendation of 115 or 116 uh, degrees for field of view in game. Um, one thing I want to also make a little bit more clear is um, from these aspect ratio calculations, um, there's there's, there's super sample resolutions and non-super sample resolutions. Um, the settings I find to be the best are with super sampling enabled. Um, what, what we can do is uh, look at your resolution super sampled for your headset. Um, in my case, the index is 2016 by 2240 with super sampling enabled. This resolution is a little high to run. Um, I'm on a 7900 or 7M50X 3D with a 4090. It can run it, but it's it's really not necessary to run that high of a resolution. Um, you know, the state of servers and stuff, FPS might vary. Um, for the refresh rates, um, you know, with variable interlacing and stuff, um, sometimes it's better to choose a lower refresh rate, 80 or 90 for the index. I, uh, see work a little bit better than 120 or 144 uh, due to you know like if you're if you're running like not quite that resol or not quite that frame rate in game you get stutter issues where the the headset's trying to interpolate between a lower and higher value and can't do in between very well so you get this like stutter effect in game where you kind of like go fast and slow then fast and slow um, to avoid that, just use a lower resolution, um, or uh, sorry, a lower refresh rate. Um, anyways, so what I'm going to do here is actually back mine down a little bit. Now, depending on the actual desktop monitor you're using, either 1080p, 2K, or 4K, you want to make sure that these values, not one of the values exceeds your monitor. So you can technically go a little bit over uh, and still get to buttons and stuff in game, but Star Citizen's main menus are fixed to a 16 by 9 resolution when we do borderless uh, resolution changes like this. Um, so 1912 by 2124, well, 1912 is not over 2560, and 2124 is over 1440, but because our width is not over that, our actual 16 by 9 menus will be smaller than my actual monitor. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm going to work on building a little calculator for that later. But even at even at 100% resolution, um, this is under 2560, so I could still access everything. Uh, even at 150%, it's still under 2560 on our width, so I would still be able to access all the buttons. Though that's a little concerning with our our height or our, sorry. Um, yeah, width and height. Our height's pretty, pretty high there, so you might have issues uh, with like Moby Glass touching some of your uh, buttons at the bottom, or even the exit buttons at the top of a screen. Um, 
but we'll I'll go ahead and show you this resolution for instance uh, so 1912 by 2124 this is the resolution we'll configure in our our um, attributes file uh, working on one monitor here uh, I could show you native but all right so our height is 1912 by 2124 we'll save that the field of view calculations 115 closer 115 I'm going to use the 115 uh, value I think you can do decimal places in here but I haven't tested that yet uh, I'm just going to leave it whole value for now uh, decimal should work I think I've seen even three decimal places um, but I'll just go with 115 okay so save your file uh, We'll minimize this. I'm going to exit out of this and let me change over to our Steam VR view so you can see exactly what you what I can see. Um, I know the resolution is going to be a little small, but I'm going to try to display both eyes so that you can see some of the stereo effect. Uh, maybe I'll disable one eye uh, through some of this. All right, so uh, your index stuff or your uh, video, your VR stuff's running. You've got Steam VR running. Go ahead and start your desktop viewer. Desktop viewer should start and be in your tray. Then go ahead and start Star Citizen. Now here I recommend just hitting WD, or sorry, Windows D, which will just go to your desktop. Uh, the reason for this is if you have like your Steam VR application in front, sometimes clicking in your um, sometimes clicking in your window can actually click on things on your desktop that are in front. So I recommend just minimizing everything. Uh, but let me go ahead and pull up my Steam VR view again and my exploit, make sure we're still recording good. So that should attach. Okay. And once we're attached, you can click in game. You should have a mouse and you should be able to reach everything on screen. Um, although the mouse cursor might not line up perfectly with things that's based on which render iteration you're using. Um, and then your delete menu. Um, for some of the delete menu settings, let me go back and change my perspective to just being one eye. I know it's gonna be really zoomed in. Um, let me go ahead and put on my headset as well. All right, so we're in Steam VR. We've got the index on. Okay, so delete menu. Now, one thing I want to mention is your middle mouse click will bring it to this like, like, uh, what do they call the peak view? I guess um, Alt Space to recenter, uh, recenter with it on your head, and then when you go to peak view, it should be centered. Your mouse will have a 3D floating effect. Um, and ideally, in a perfect world, we would do geometry 3D construction. Um, this is pretty demanding because it doesn't just do a translation matrix. It actually does a full render from both perspectives of each eye. Uh, so you're technically rendering twice the amount of work than you would normally do. Um, and I find this to be extremely single core dependent in this iteration of Star Citizen uh, 3.20. Um, but we can start with geometry, look at our frame rates, and then from there we can go to non-geometry 3D or the Z 3D, which does Z axis translations. Um, here, just simple slider for higher effect. I'm gonna leave it at like one for now. Um, you know what, three's fine. Three gives it a pretty good effect, making your character seem to be about five or six feet tall. And of course, these, these settings can be personalized to your preference. Um, now, one thing you can see is this actual display is still in 16 by 9 resolution, uh, but it's actually over scanning on my desktop. Uh, once we get into game, we can do, and you can see the rest of the resolution filled in there. I'll do, we'll go ahead and just stand up, we'll hit space, and then middle mouse back to our zoomed view. We'll get rid of our chat because it's cut off. 
um, and you can see like with our Moby glass things are really zoomed in and if you look around it doesn't really work so you can middle mouse then once you look around it'll actually move your mouse to the different locations so you can actually reach the UI in game by looking where you need to go when you middle mouse to go to the peak view um, I hope that shows pretty well let's see I'm doing left eye rendering so I can show like reaching up here you know I can go pretty high pretty far you can see that the mouse is limited and that's because I am hitting the bottom of my actual window uh, I think my vertical was like 2000 but it's a 1440p tall monitor but by being able to look you can actually reach some buttons uh, so you'll have to play around with that. You can always do super sizing or whatever, uh, super scaling, DSR, etc. on your um, desktop monitor if you don't have a 4K. Uh, or you can just run lower resolutions on your VR setup. Um, anyways, enough of that. So here, zoomed in view, I actually have the full 3D effect. Uh, we can do Alt F to see our frame rate. You can see I'm, I'm getting about 40 frames with the uh, Z buffer. I'm actually not sure if you can see that. I think that's an overlay, but Alt F will bring up a green um, like display of your frame rate. So if we go to Z normal, this is going into the translation effects. I think the default settings are 0.5 for your depth near far and then 0.03 for your focal distance. And what this does is it's going to translate everything close to you. Uh, on the right eye, it will m transition it to the left and everything beyond this, this waiting distance, 0.5, uh, which is a value of minimum to maximum. So it's basically saying everything from a, a middle of the maximum total distance we can have in Star Citizen, everything beyond that point will be transitioned to the right to give it a far away effect. The problem with this, which you can't see it here on the left eye, but give me a second, we'll trans transition to the right eye in Star Citizen, or in a Steam VR view. So with the right eye, you can kind of make out, actually I don't know if you will be able to make it out. Uh, yeah, you can make it out. Uh, whoops, I'm gonna alt tab back into Star Citizen, okay. So as you can kind of see, let me like do a slow walk here. As we pass by this wall, you can see there's like a wave effect. What this is actually doing is there's map geometry on our left eye that still exists there but we're transitioning the textures on the z-plane to the right um, in this instance I might have had that backwards so right eye everything closest to the right and everything bars to the left is that is that right I don't know anyways so you can see that there's like this like little line that like kinda it, you'll actually have this effect in a lot of places so I'll keep it on the right eye here for just a moment and give you an example um, now, I think Vorpex documentation was saying that for VR, you're supposed to use a zero setting. When you use a zero setting, you actually don't have this effect at all. It, it, it goes away. Although, things do still seem to be 3D, but they, they lose that effect quite a bit. My character seems to be pretty tall, and the world seems to be pretty big, but, uh, you bump that focal point to just 0 0.01 and things really pop. Things that are close really get close for you. But you can see there's that wah-wah effect, as I like to say. This, this like, like an object still rendered there, but the textures have been shifted. It, it's hard to explain, but you'll understand like once you see it. Um, it's really obvious if we look at like doorways. It's very obvious in the doorways. If we look at like pipes or railings, you can see that effect on the railing, how it affects things in the background. You can see like there's two people over there. I get just in the right position. So that effect is, um, it's a little annoying, but it's, uh, it's not bad. I mean, it gives you a good 3D effect in general. Um, and then we can always do Z adaptive, which tries to get around some of this a little more and then also add some focal effects. But you can see there's still a little bit of that effect on people. As he walks, especially, you can see there's like a big trans, like a like a big uh, like clear object or invisible object behind him. Still, really hard to explain, but 
you'll understand what I'm talking about when you see it in uh, stereoscopic. Uh, it's always really, really obvious on these to me. Whenever you walk through here, you can just you really see the effect. Um, something I like to use is like the hanging cables. I'm not seeing the hanging cables at all. Um, and then anytime you come to terminals like this, very zoomed in, so just go to your peak view. And then with peak view, because your head's locked into this position, uh, you should be able to like retrieve and exit, and you know you you should have plenty of mouse mouse movability. Um, I guess it's pretty much covering everything. I hope that helps to shed some light on some basic configuration for Vorpex. Um, help your understanding to an extent. Um, let's see what else. Hopefully I'm not dropping too many frames. Oh, and frame rate's like way better. Uh, well, I say way better. It's usually a lot better. Uh, the 7900 XTX I'm on at the moment seems to be struggling. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's single core again. I'm at a, at a station. Shouldn't be a lot of people here. So maybe, maybe I can try lowering resolution. Uh, what else is real quick? The full VR settings. Oh, right. So one thing I wanted to explain is um, with the field of view mapping calculation I have in the spreadsheet, um, we're trying to map for a one to one pixel ratio. So an image zoom of 1.12 is actually bringing the, the right border, well, you're looking at the right eye, so the right border just out of view and the bottom and top border is just out of view. We can actually back this off and you can actually see the edge of the window, right? Especially if I'm looking fast. And notice our field of view actually looks pretty, pretty wide, right? So the idea of the field of view calculation is to help offset this zoom so right about here actually gives me like a perfect field of view in the index. The lines seem to be straight even off to the side of my screen. Um, they're, they're not warping at all, they're not stretching. Whereas if we zoom out here and we can see a little bit further, you can actually see the lines aren't perfectly straight. They actually warp a little bit. At least that's the effect I can see with the, uh, the shape of the lens. So that... Uh, that's what we're trying to map for is pixel one to one that way when you transition your head you don't actually see the border ever and when you rotate your head like this um, I might even have to back off the field of view some or we can just zoom a little more you don't want to zoom too much but I think I had 1.17 before yeah 1.17 that looks pretty good so you can really tell if you like turn your head things should stay the lines should stay at the same angles that they are like like this line down here that comes across the window should stay pretty much the same like flatness in the same angle hard to explain but you'll you'll see it in vr it can be pretty obvious if your field of view is too high or too low and that should cover just about everything thanks for tuning in